There's low grade or small cell lymphoma, and then there's high grade or large cell lymphoma. And they're really quite distinct in how cats will present. Welcome back to the Cat Cliff Notes version, where I'm breaking this up and giving you a little mini series on everything you need to know about cat lymphoma. This is the second in the series, so if you missed number one, be sure to go back. I'll put a link below to vlog number 97. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the most common form of lymphoma, gastrointestinal lymphoma. Let's dive in, but stay tuned. If you wanna know about things like nasal lymphoma or renal lymphoma, we're gonna talk about those as well. So let's hop in, let's talk about gastrointestinal lymphoma in cats. Okay, number three, we're gonna be talking about gastrointestinal lymphoma. Lymphoma. And I think there's two things that I really want you to know about that is that there's two distinct forms. There's low grade or small cell lymphoma, and then there's high grade or large cell lymphoma. And they're really quite distinct in how cats will present. Both forms of the disease will cause cats to lose weight, have vomiting, diarrhea, and then some degree of changes in appetite. So they may completely not eat or they may be picky or not want to eat the same food. But again, usually vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, and then changes in appetite to anorexia. You can have one of those or you can have all of those and still end up with the diagnosis of lymphoma. Cats that have the low-grade lymphoma, the small cell lymphoma, it's usually more of a chronic disease that it is developing over months, usually with like three to six months. So it is a much more slowly developing disease process. Cats with high-grade lymphoma, those cats tend to get sicker, quicker, and usually that is a rapidly progressing cancer, and those cats are getting sick over days to weeks. We're making the diagnosis much more quickly, and we are starting a more aggressive injectable chemotherapy much more quicker. So what I think is confusing for a lot of pet owners is usually when you start Googling about lymphoma, if your cat has small cell low-grade lymphoma and you start reading the stuff about high-grade lymphoma, which is the more common form, it gets confusing because we use different chemotherapy protocols and the prognosis is different. So I really just wanna make that distinction that the high grade and the low grade lymphomas are different. They're, you know, One is a more slowly developing disease, the other one is much more quickly developing and sometimes it's more challenging to confirm the diagnosis in cats with small cell, low-grade lymphoma. It's often very difficult to distinguish from inflammatory bowel disease. Those kitties often need biopsies, usually uh, surgical biopsies or endoscopic biopsies. And cats with a high-grade lymphoma, we do ultrasounds and often we can do cytology, ultrasound-guided aspirates. So, they're not the same beast, even though they're all called lymphoma. So I think that's a really important thing to understand when we're talking about gastrointestinal lymphoma. The other thing, and I think, and there are studies to back this up, is you know I think one of the things that is frustrating is all too often we think that vomiting is normal, and I think that a lot of pet owners often make excuses that we say the cat just eats too fast or that he's always done this or they have a sensitive stomach or maybe the cat's just a nervous eater and that's why they're vomiting or they have a long haired coat and they're just vomiting up hairballs. But vomiting is not normal. And you know, there are studies that look at cats that have vomiting and they looked at cats that had vomiting more than two times per month for three months or small bowel diarrhea, or weight loss of a pound in the last six months. And those cats went on and had some abnormalities on their ultrasound, and then went on and had surgical biopsies. And this was a study um, that came out uh, in 2013, and they looked at 100 cats, and 99 of those 100 cats with chronic signs of vomiting, diarrhea, or weight loss, that I described in an abnormal ultrasound that went on and had surgery. 99 of those 100 cats either had inflammatory bowel disease 
or lymphoma. Most of those cats had the small cell, low grade lymphoma. A few did have high grade lymphoma as well. But it really just goes to emphasize that vomiting is not normal, weight loss is not normal, diarrhea is not normal. And it's one of those things where I think it's important that we weigh our cats regularly, we get them into, and sometimes actually like circle on a calendar how many times a month they're vomiting because I think that can really highlight that it's it's not as normal as we think. So again, in that study, it was greater than two times per month for three months minimum. And that was one of the triggers to get an ultrasound and look for thickened intestines. So again, I'm gonna talk to your oncologist or your veterinarian about the high grade versus the low grade. But I just wanted to make that important distinction that they're two different entities. High grade lymphoma is typically treated with an IV chemotherapy. There are some oral forms. I'm gonna do my next vlog on the chemotherapy treatment options, um, but low grade lymphoma is usually managed with steroids and oral chemotherapy. So again, they're very distinct, even though they're all called lymphoma, and I know that can be very confusing. The other thing I want you to know about lymphoma is there are other locations that we see it. It's not just the GI tract. So what are some of the other locations that we see? So we often see it in this the nasal sinus cavity and believe it or not that's one of the best places that your cat can have it. Why is that? Because those cats typically have the best prognosis. We can see it in the kidneys. We can see it in the liver. We can see it in the central nervous system. So like the spinal cord, occasionally the brain as well. So again, there are these white blood cells circulating throughout the body. So potentially we can see it anywhere in the body, but gastrointestinal tract is the most common place. But the prognosis has been associated with the location, so that is going to be one of the important things. So it's not just the gastrointestinal tract, like I said, there are other locations as well, and often multiple places. And I should mention when I talk about the gastrointestinal tract, it often will involve those lymph nodes that are you know, near the GI tract as well in the abdomen. Sometimes those cats will have liver and splenic involvement, and that will still be considered part of the GI lymphoma. There are some cats that will just have liver lymphoma and that is distinct. Some cats that will just have kidney lymphoma. And interesting, those kitties with kidney lymphoma often will then progress and go into the central nervous system. So a lot of you know unique things that you're gonna wanna talk to your oncologist or your veterinarian about. Um, I always put links on where you can find a veterinary specialist, uh, cause I do think it is worthwhile to try to talk to them or and always talk to your veterinarian and see if they can guide you, you know, with that referral and getting that information as well. So that was the third and the fourth thing in my little mini series on cat lymphoma. Be sure to join me next week where we'll be talking about the prognosis or, you know, when you walk in, you really want to know how is my cat going to do with lymphoma? So we're going to be talking about the prognosis for cats that get treated and cats that that don't get treated, and some of the prognostic factors, which are some of the things that we can do to help you predict how your cat may do before they start treatment and then as they're going through treatment. So these are the predictive factors. So be sure to join me next week. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and share this video with someone that you think may benefit from the information. I so appreciate you joining and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.